Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more attuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Today's episode is going to be a special one, though, where we exclude the cost of the Commander. With just a $25 budget, it's pretty much impossible to build around some Commanders unless we do so. Sometimes you get lucky and open up a Commander in a pack, or you could just trade for them if you really want to build around them. So our budget is still going to be $25, but again, that's $25 for just 99 cards because we're excluding the cost of that Commander. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new classic pink playmat and Commander's Quarters t-shirts on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's episode is a patron-selected deck tech. Once a month, patrons of this show vote on what commander they'd like to see on an upcoming episode. Today's commander is Zancha Sleeper Agent. Zancha is a 5-5 minion that costs 1 black red. As Zancha Sleeper Agent enters the battlefield, an opponent of your choice gains control of it. Zancha attacks each combat of Fable and can't attack its owner or Planeswalkers its owner controls. Pay 3, Zancha's controller loses 2 life and you draw a card. Any player may activate this ability. So Zancha is a very unique commander and one that's very interesting to build around. The player that you give Zancha to is going to be in a world of pain. Because not only can you activate her ability, but anyone else can too. So what's our strategy with this deck? Well, we want to ramp, protect Zancha, and then wipe the board over and over again. Ramping is crucial for this deck because we want to be able to activate Zancha's ability as many times as we can. We not only want to protect Zancha, but we want to protect ourselves, so we're going to keep wiping the board over and over again, but keeping her on it. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to incentivize our opponents to punish each other. So we're not going to be the only ones that are going to activate Zancha's ability. We're going to make sure that our opponents feel the need to as well. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. So let's go on to our first tactic, tactic number one, Mana Matters. First up, we're going to be running Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for basic land to put into play tapped. And then there's Prismatic Lens, which can either tap for a colorless or can filter our mana. Sphere of the Suns is going to enter the battlefield tapped with three charge counters on it, and we can tap to remove one of those charge counters from it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Star Compass is also going to enter the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for either of our colors depending on our land situation. Next up, there's Rakdos Signet, which we can pay one and tap it for black red. And then we're going to be running Rakdos Locket, which can tap for either of our colors, and we can pay four Rakdos to tap and sacrifice it to draw two cards. Next up, we're going to be running three mana rocks that tap for two colorless with Worn Power Stone, Sisse's Ring, and Urgolem's Eye. Worn Power Stone does cost one less than the other two, but it does enter the battlefield tapped. And then there's Mindstone, Hedron Archive, and Dreamstone Hedron, each of which do the exact same thing, but at different levels. Mindstone taps for one colorless, and we can pay one and tap and sacrifice it to draw one card. Hedron Archive does the exact same thing, but for two, and Dreamstone Hedron does the exact same thing, but for three. Next up is Everflowing Chalice, which is going to tap for a colorless for half the amount of mana that we put into it. And then we're running Victory Chimes, which we can tap, and a player of our choice is going to add colorless to their mana pool, and it's going to untap during each other player's untapped step. This comes in huge for this deck to give us some additional mana for Zon ability. And finally, there's Unstable Obelisk, which can either tap for a colorless, or we can pay 7 to tap and sacrifice it to destroy target permanent. Rakdos has a hard time dealing with certain types of permanents, so this can come in huge later on in the game. But we're not quite done talking about ramp just yet, so let's go through some more cards in tactic number 2, the Kitchen Sink. First up, there's Thran Turbine, which is going to add 2 colorless to our mana pool during our upkeep, but we can't use that mana to cast spells. Although we can't use it to cast spells, we can use it to activate ability, so this comes in huge with Zancha. Essentially, this gives us a nearly free activation of Zancha during our upkeep. Next up, there's Mana Cash, which says at the beginning of each player's end step, put a charge counter on Mana Cash for each untapped land that player controls. And then it has remove a charge counter from Mana Cash, add colorless to your mana pool. Any player may activate this ability, but only during their turn before the end step. So essentially what this does is it incentivizes people to tap their lands and use their mana. Because if they don't, the next person up is going to get some extra mana from Mana Cash. And with Zancha in play, there's always going to be a way for players to use that mana. And then we're going to be running Mana Geyser, which is going to add red to our mana pool for each tap land our opponents control. Mana Cash isn't the only thing that we're using to incentivize people to tap their lands. Mana Geyser can easily add a ton of mana to our mana pool, and again, Zancha is the perfect mana sink for us. Next up is Blink Moth Urn, which says at the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colorless for each artifact they control. Again, with this deck, we don't mind benefiting others and giving them some mana because we're giving them ways to use it with Zancha. They're going to be drawing cards off of her ability, but they're also going to be draining its controller's life. And our final card in this tactic is actually the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Heartstone. Heartstone is an artifact that costs three, and it says activated abilities of creatures cost one less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana and ability cost to activate to less than one mana. So essentially with this out, Zancha's ability is only going to cost two for any one to activate. 
This not only makes it easier for us to sink mana into Zancha's ability, but it makes it much easier for our opponents to justify it too. This deck is very good at ramping, but Hearthstone allows us to be more effective with that ramp. Hearthstone allows this deck to run as efficiently as it possibly can, and that's why it's the golden pick of the deck. So we've gone through ramping, but what about protecting Zancha? Let's go through some ways to do that in tactic number three, unblock. First up, there's Key to the City, which we can tap and discard a card, and up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. And then when Key to the City becomes untapped, we can pay two, and if we do, draw a card. So Zancha is forced to swing each turn, and there's nothing that we can do about that. What we can do is we can make sure that she's not killed by combat damage. And by making her unblockable, not only are we keeping her alive, but we're also putting in more damage on our opponents. Zancha is a very aggressively costed commander as a 5 5 for 3. So if we can get something like this out early, she's going to be putting in a ton of damage on our opponents. But we can also play something like Bedlam, which just straight up says creatures can't block. This card can really throw a wrench into a lot of people's plans. And with this deck, we're not running any creatures that we intend to block with anyway, so this really doesn't affect us. But we can protect Zancha in other ways too, so let's go through them now in tactic number 4. Give it another go. First, up there's Thrill Retainer, which is going to give Zancha plus one plus one, and we can sacrifice it to regenerate her. Unnatural Endurance is also going to regenerate her, and it's going to give her plus two plus zero. Now, the buffs are nice, but again, the main reason that we want these cards in the deck is to protect her. So we're also going to be running Demonic Vigor, which gives her plus one plus one, and when she dies, we get to return her back to our hand. Not only does this help us get around the commander attacks, but it also allows us to recast her to give her to someone else. Next up, we've got Unhallowed Pack and Shades Form, both of which pretty much do the exact same thing. There are auras that say, when Enchanted Creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So when our commander dies with one of these attached to her, she's going to come back into play under our control. But once she does, her Enter the Battlefield trigger is going to happen, and we can give her to someone else. We're also running some more cards that have similar effects, but at instant speed. Undying Evil is going to give her Undying until end of turn. And then Supernatural Stamina and Abnormal Endurance are both going to do the exact same thing. They're going to give her plus two plus zero, and when this creature dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. So again, these are great effects because not only does it keep Zancha on the battlefield, but we can also move her around if we need to. And finally, we're going to be running Voyager Staff, which has pay two, sacrifice Voyager Staff, exile target creature, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This is a fantastic effect for this deck because we can either use this to protect Zancha or just to move around if we want to. Zancha can be a very powerful commander, but she has a major downside built into her. When the opponent that's controlling her dies, we get control of her again. She's not entering the battlefield, so we don't get that into the battlefield trigger. This means that we can be stuck with Zancha, and our opponents can use our own commander's ability against us. This is the reason that we're running Voyager Staff, as well as plenty of other things to either get her off the battlefield or to give her back to our opponents. But for now, let's go through more cards that make sure that she stays on the battlefield in tactic number 5, Regeneration Station. First up, there's Soul Channeling, which allows us to pay 2 life to regenerate the enchanted creature. And then Blessing of Leeches has Flash, and we can pay 0 to regenerate the enchanted creature, but at the beginning of our upkeep, we lose 1 life. Both of these are fantastic, repeatable ways to ensure that Zancha stays on the battlefield. Next up is Medicine Bag, which we can pay 1 and tap to discard a card to regenerate target creature. With Zancha's ability, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards, so that is a small price to pay to keep her alive. And finally, we're running Strains of Undeath, which is an aura, and when it comes into play, we're going to make target player discard two cards, and then we can pay black to regenerate the enchanted creature. Making someone discard two cards is just a nice additional benefit, and that's going to make them want to draw more cards with her ability. Again, the longer that we can keep Zancha on the battlefield, the quicker we can knock out one of our opponents. But to protect ourselves, we need to make sure that Zancha is the only creature on the battlefield. So let's go through some ways that can help us with that in tactic number six, four or so. First up, there's Breath of Dargars, which is going to deal one damage to each creature without flying at each player, but we're going to kick it so it deals four instead. Zancha has five toughness, so we're going to make sure that we can keep her alive with our board wipes if we can. So we're also going to be running Mizium Mortars, and when we overload it, it's going to deal four damage to each creature that we don't control. When Crater Hellion comes into play, it's going to deal four damage to each other creature. And then Lava Ball Trap is going to destroy two target lands and deal four damage to each creature. Now it does cost eight mana, but if an opponent had two or more lands enter the battlefield under his or her control this turn, we can pay five instead. In Commander, this happens plenty of times, so generally we're going to be paying 5. Next up, we've got some wrath that we need to be a little more careful with. Arkbond says, choose target creature. When that creature is dealt damage this turn, it deals that much damage to each other creature and each player. So if we don't have a way to save our commander, we want to make sure that this amount is 4 or less. Next up, we're going to be running Incite Rebellion, which says, for each player, Incite Rebellion deals damage to that player and each creature that player controls equal to the number of creatures they control. Depending on the board state, this card can be a fantastic card that not only clears the board, but keeps our commander alive and deals a ton of damage to each other player. And then there's Chain Reaction, which says, Chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of creatures on the battle field. Again, we need to make sure that we're using this properly not only to protect ourselves, but also to protect our commander. Again, if we clear the board, our commander is easily able to get through when attacking. And then we've got Volcanic Vision, which says, Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Volcanic Vision deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to each creature your opponent's control. Exile Volcanic Vision. Not only can this be a huge board wipe for us, but it can also bring back one of our best cards to use again. 
But these aren't the only damage baseboard wipes that we're running, so let's go through some more in tactic number seven. That's my X. First up, there's Comet Storm, which says, choose target creature or player, then choose another target creature or player for each time Comet Storm was kicked. Comet Storm deals X damage to each of them. This deck is great at ramping, so we can really take advantage of this card's flexibility. We can either wipe out a ton of creatures, or we can even go for players' life totals. In the late game, this is a fantastic kill spell that can take out multiple opponents. But we're also going to be running some more efficient board wipes with Star Storm and Magma Quake. Star Storm is going to deal X damage to each creature, and we can cycle it for three. And Magma Quake is going to deal X damage to each creature without flying and each Planeswalker. And finally, we've got Earthquake and Molten Disaster, both of which can do a ton of work for us. They're going to deal X damage to each creature without flying and each player. And we can even kick Molten Disaster to give it split second. Both of these are a fantastic way to deal with a ton of creatures on the board and also to bring our opponent's life totals down. But we're not quite done with board wipes, so let's go through the last of them in tactic number 8, Dark Magic. First up, there's Yeheni's Expertise, which is going to give all creatures minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn. It's also going to allow us to cast a card with converted mana cost of 3 or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. And then Languish is going to give all creatures minus 4, minus 4 until end of turn. Again, we want our board wipes to be as efficient as possible, but also to make sure that we can keep our commander alive. So next up, there's Bane of the Living. We can morph it for X, Black, Black, and when it's turned face up, all creatures are going to get minus X, minus X until end of turn. This is a very flexible card that we can use to keep our commander alive or to kill her if we need to. And then we're going to be running Reaver Demon, which when it enters the battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, we get to destroy all non-artifact, non-black creatures, and they can't be regenerated. So this is going to hit a ton of creatures, but it's not going to hit Zancha. And finally, there's Necromantic Selection, which might be our best board wipe. It says destroy all creatures, then return a creature card put into a graveyard this way to the battlefield under your control. It's a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types, exile Necromantic Selection. So essentially, this destroys all creatures, including Zancha. Then she comes back into play under our control, and we get her into the battlefield trigger. We can either give her back to the opponent that had her, or to someone else. This allows us to clear the board and to change where we place her if we want to. All these cards are great, and we can use Zancha's ability to dig deeper into our deck to find the right card for the right situation. But there are some times when we need a specific card right away. So let's go through some cards that can help out in tactic number 9, Seeking Pain. First up, there's Diabolic Tutor, which allows us to search our library for a card and put it into our hand, then we shuffle our library. So we can go get something like Hearthstone, or we can go get a Wrath if we really need it. And then there's Razgus Rite, which does the same thing for one more mana, but it also has cycling for a black. This can just be a little more flexible since we can cycle it early if we really need to draw a card. We can even use these tutors to search for one of the cards that we haven't gone through yet. So let's go through those cards now in tactic number 10, Punishment. First up, there's Profane Command, which says choose two. Target player loses X life. Return target creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. And up to X target creatures gain fear until end of turn. Most of the time, we're going to make target player lose X life and give target creature minus X, minus X until end of turn. Again, this deck is very effective at ramping, so it can really utilize this card. And then there's Rakdos Charm, which says choose one. Exile all cards from target player's graveyard, destroy target artifact, or each creature deals one damage to its controller. This is a very flexible card that can help us out in a ton of situations. Next up is Dingus Staff, which does kind of the opposite of Rakdos Charm. Rakdos Charm punishes players for having a lot of creatures, whereas Dingus Staff punishes them for their creatures dying. It has, whenever a creature dies, Dingus Staff deals 2 damage to that creature's controller. With all the board wipes that we're running in this deck, this damage can add up quickly. And then we're going to be running Citadel of Pain, which says at the beginning of each player's end step, Citadel of Pain deals X damage to that player where X is the number of untapped lands they control. This is another way for us to basically force our opponents to tap out during their turn. Since they're tapping out anyways, they can use that mana with Zancha's ability. And next up, we've got two more ways to make your opponents tap out. Tectonic Instability says, whenever a land enters the battlefield, tap all lands its controller controls. And Warstole says, whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, tap all lands that player controls. And on top of that, if a creature an opponent controls attacks, all creatures that opponent controls attack if able. Both of these can essentially force our opponents to spend all their mana at once. And again, rather than let that mana go to waste, they can drain out their opponent. Finally, there's Worst Fears, which says you control target player during that player's next turn, exile Worst Fears. By controlling them, you can make the worst decisions for them possible. And if you pick the player that has control of Zantra, you can just make them drain themselves out. This deck is a ton of fun and can be very punishing for your opponents. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. First up, there's Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can sacrifice to search our library for a basic land to put into play tapped. Then there's Rocky Tar Pit, which enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap to sacrifice it to search our library for either a swamp or a mountain and put it onto the battlefield. Next up is Jund and Grixis Panorama, both of which can tap for a colorless, so we can pay one to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for either a swamp or a mountain and put it into play tapped. And then there's Warp Landscape, which can tap for a colorless, so we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put it into play tapped. Next up, we're going to be running Urborg Volcano, Rakdos Guildgate, Cinder Barrens, Akuum Refuge, and Bloodfell Caves, each of which enter the battlefield tapped and tap for either a black or red mana. On top of that, Akuum Refuge and Bloodfell Caves will each gain us one life when they come into play. And then there's Rakdos Carnarium, which enters the battlefield tapped, and we have to return a land back to our hand when it comes into play. It does have the upside, though, of tapping for black red. Next up is Rogue's Passage, which can tap for a colorless, or we can pay four to tap it to make target creature unblockable until end of turn. And finally, we're going to be running 24 base basic lands, 12 of those are going to be mountains, and 12 will be swamps. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. 
A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Zantra EDH rec deck is going to set you back $249.90, so let's say we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $24.99. And just a quick reminder that our deck cost actually doesn't include our commander because it is a commander excluded episode. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades that you can add into the deck and what I would take out for those cards too. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into this, these reasonable upgrades are going to be completely based off of my own perspective. When you're making choices on how to adjust your deck, you're taking your own playstyle and meta into account. So make sure that you factor that in when it comes to making your own decisions on what to swap in and what to swap out. Now that we're on the same page, let's go through how I personally would upgrade the deck. First up, there's Talisman of Indulgence, which comes in at $1.57. It's an artifact that costs two, and we can tap it for a colorless, or we can tap it for a black or red mana, but it's going to deal one damage to us. To put Talisman of Indulgence in, we're going to be taking out Rakdos Locket. We're always going to prefer mana rocks that pretty much do the exact same thing and cost less. And for this deck, we really don't care about that card draw from Rakdos Locket because we have Zancha's ability. And now we're going to be upgrading this deck with Phyrexian Scriptures, which comes in at $1.52. It's an enchantment saga that costs two black black. With its first lore counter, we're going to put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. With its second lore counter, we're going to destroy all non-artifact creatures. With the third lore counter, we're going to exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. To put Phyrexian Scriptures in, we're going to take out Incite Rebellion. Phyrexian Scriptures essentially is going to wipe out every creature except for Zancha. Incite Rebellion can be really effective with the right board state, but it's very situational. There are plenty of times when it can be a dead card in our hand, so it's an easy swap for us. Next up, let's add in Stuffy Doll, which comes in at $4.19. It's a 0-1 indestructible construct that costs 5. When it enters the battlefield, we get to choose a player, and whenever Stuffy Doll is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. We can also tap it to deal 1 damage to itself. To put Stuffy Doll in, we're going to take out Profane Command. With all the damage-based board wipes that we have in this deck, Stuffy Doll can absolutely demolish one of our opponents. Whereas Profane Command is just not as impactful as we want it to be. And then we're going to be adding in Chaos Warp, which comes in at $2.20. It's an instant that costs 2 in a red, and it says the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. To put Chaos Warp in, we're going to be taking out Unhollowed Pact. Chaos Warp is a fantastic piece of removal, and one that Rakdos desperately needs. Whereas Unhollowed Pact costs a lot for what it does. Next up, let's add in Curse of Opulence, which comes in at $4.26. It's an ore curse that costs a red, and it says Enchant Player. When Enchanted Player is attacked, create a colorless artifact token named Gold. It has Sacrifice this artifact, add one man of any color to your mana pool. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. To put this in, we're going to be taking out Shades Form. Curse of Opulence is a fantastic way for us to ramp, and it can also help us direct some aggression to one specific player. Like Unhollowed Pact, Shades Form just is not as effective as we want it to be for its mana cost. Finally, let's add in Black Market, which comes in at $7.02. It's an enchantment that costs 3 black black, and it says whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Black Market. To put Black Market in, we're going to be taking out Thran Turbine. With the number of board wipes that we're running, we can ramp an incredible amount with Black Market in play. Thran Turbine does a decent job at ramping us, but it also forces us to use mana during our upkeep. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you think about this deck, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying decks like this one, or just individual cards, make sure you use that deck list link in the description below. Not only will you be getting great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure that you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel, and then check out some of our playlists on budget commander decks, commander excluded decks, and break the bank episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.